This is Rockingham County, Virginia. It's my home, and when I get away from the store, I like to come up here and look at it. We have a way of doing business here that works pretty well. Nobody told us we had to do it this way. Other sections of the country do things differently. But this way works out fine for us. I'd like to tell you about it. It's just an ordinary county, I guess, though it's mighty pretty. It's in the Shenandoah Valley between the Blue Ridge and the Allegheny Mountains. A lot of people drive through here on this fine highway. Tourists come through by the hundreds. <laughs> they drive too fast to see much. But if they slowed down, they'd see pleasant little villages with fine old houses. It's old country for this part of the world. First settler built his house in 1727. Here it is. Of course, they've patched it up now and then. The Civil War left this section burnt out, gutted. Some of the wounds still show. But the people, instead of crying over the ruins, dug in and began to build for the future. There's a lot of history been made around here. George Washington rode a fine Morgan stallion through this gap during our fight for independence. Yes, a lot of people go through the valley. But they don't have much time to look around off the main roads. If they did, they might see farmers like Fred McNeil plowing his field or doing the endless things that farmers everywhere have to do. It's a rocky 70 acres, but then the whole country around here is rocky. It's been farmed a long time. It's too hilly to start with. Fact is, a lot of it's pretty well worn out. Fields must be fertilized. Fences must be fixed. Farming's tough work in any country. Raise a lot of turkeys down here. There's a lot to do, even with electric power. Where you've got chickens, you've got eggs to sell. selling to be done in town today. This is Harrisonburg, the county seat. It's a shopping center for everybody around here. It's a good friendly town, just about like any other. But it's a little different from a lot of other towns in this country. Most of the people in this region decided to go into business together. We organized cooperatives, a lot of them. Most of us, not all of us, belong to one or more of these customer-owned business organizations. 
Fred takes his eggs into cell, just like all farmers do. Takes them to a big store. It's got everything, just like every farm supply store. But this one is owned and run by its customers. It's a co-op. Yes, we built this ourselves. Started with the buying club. That's where a lot of farmers all chip in to buy a carload of fertilizer or something to save money by buying in large quantities. Now we get everything the same way. The store buys for all of us. We buy each other's farm products and sell them on the open market. We buy the finest supplies and quantity lots at good prices to sell to our members. Started with a little shed. Now we've got this $100,000 store and four branches out in the country. 4,500 of us put up the money. We own it and we run it. I've been with it since it started. In fact, I'm a storekeeper here. Fred pays the same for his can of tobacco as he'd pay anywhere. Same with everything else bought here. But at the end of the year, there's a surplus. <laughs> yep, candy for the kids, too. Everything we farmers need. Shoes. All kinds of hardware. Everything the farmers need or want. We sell everything here from tractors to lipsticks. Fertilizer or feed in special mixtures for any requirements. This is one of the many things we do for members here. Does all this equipment make money? It sure does, though we call it surplus rather than profit. But it's all money. Every year we have a meeting and all vote on how much we want to put back in to expand or buy new equipment. Then we divide up what's left and every one of our 4,000 members gets back in cash a percentage of his purchases during the year. Generally it's about 8% and he also gets a bigger share in the plant. Last year it averaged about $120 a piece. Yes, we have our own gas station, too. Gas, oil, tractor fuel, everything needed to feed the modern workhorses. There were a lot of people who didn't believe in this at first. Thought the farmers wouldn't get along with each other. They were too independent by nature. Getting it started took a lot of talking to people who couldn't quite get the idea. They thought it was too complicated and couldn't be made to work. Well, it did work. And now, most of the doubters belong. We all own it. We all manage it the way we think best. Here's another business run the same way. A milk processing plant. While the kids and Mrs. McNeil look around town, Fred delivers his milk. He belongs to this, too. Matter of fact, Fred belongs to a number of co-ops. Some of the people in the county don't belong to any. Others have joined all of them. Just depends on what they have to sell and what they want to do. Fred gets a better price for his milk here. Besides that, gets his share of the plant surplus. Works the same way as the store. Every member owns it and runs it. The milk is weighed and credit is given to the farmer. A sample is taken of each farm's milk as it comes in. It's tested for a bacterial count. Ninety percent of the milk sold in Harrisonburg goes through our plant. 